a function sounds more complicated than it is. Sounds scary and mathematical. Well, it is mathematical, but it's not scary, because you know um, a lot of mathematical functions. For example, you know arithmetic. I'm, I'm sorry, you know addition. Addition is a uh, mathematical function that we are all very familiar with. What a function is, is simply something that takes in an input or inputs and produces an output. So, suppose I have a big box that does addition, and I throw in a 3 and a 2. It makes a rumbling and groaning noise, and what pops out the bottom? 5, because that's what addition does. It take, if it has 3 and 2 as inputs, it produces 5 as an output. Now, it's a numerical function. Why? Because the inputs and outputs are all numbers. Okay, so you are familiar with functions. We're about to learn about not numerical functions, but functions to do with categorical propositions. Specifically, these three. Converse, obverse, and contrapositive. These are three functions for categorical propositions. And just like all functions, they take an input. In this case, they're, they're not like addition. Addition takes two inputs and produces one output. They're more like square root. What is the square root of 16? Four. Yeah, that's something that has one input and one output. Same with all these three. You uh, take a categorical proposition and you can perform any one of these functions on it and it produces a new categorical proposition. Okay? Simple concept. Now you just need to know um, how each of them work. So let's look at Converse to begin with. Converse is simple. All that Converse does is it switches the terms. So if, we if our input is all SRP, what will its converse be? Exactly. It's that simple. Now this is a little bit confusing because what does S stand for? Subject. But what is the subject of all PRS? P. So you have something called the subject, which is now the predicate, but that's what converse does. Okay. So, what is the converse of all whales are mammals? All mammals are whales. And actually, now, now that we've got to converse, I can explain why I was so picky about adding the word things. You know, so I, I wouldn't let you say all, um, I don't know, all waterfalls are beautiful. You had to say all waterfalls are beautiful things. Why? Well. If I don't do that, what is the converse of all frogs are green? All green are frogs. All green are frogs, right? Does that make sense? No. What does make sense is all green things are frogs. Okay. So that's converse. What is the, uh, we've already done all SRP, destiny. What is the converse of no SRP? Don't overthink this. You just switch the terms. You don't change anything else. <laughs> well, what did he say? Yes, that's right. What is the converse, uh, let's see, um, Philip, what is the converse of some SRP? Some PRS. Pretty easy. Hunter, what is the converse of some SRP? Not P? Some no. Some S R P. No. The converse of some S R P is, uh, not P is, oh. just switch the terms. Oh, okay. Some P R S. Not S. Yeah, not S. Yes. So in other words, um, this. Easy peasy. Converse is fairly straightforward. Now, this last col column asks whether or not it's legitimate. 
the function is legitimate. Now, what it is for a function to be legitimate, I'm going to say, and you're going to write down, but I'm not going to bother to write down because I'm lazy. Uh, a function is legitimate if it preserves the truth value of the original, of the input. So converse is legitimate if you start with a true uh, categorical proposition and the product is true, the converse is true, uh, in all possible circumstances. Okay? Let's see if we can work this out. All whales are mammals. What is the converse of that one again? All mammals are whales. What is the truth value of all whales are mammals? True. True. What is the truth value of all mammals are whales? False. Why? Because there's plenty of mammals that are not whales, like us, for example. Unless some of you are whales cunningly disguised. Um, so that tells us that converse is not legitimate for A types. No, not legitimate. That makes sense? Because it doesn't preserve the truth value. It doesn't say the same thing. Essentially, another way of putting it is legitimate is a function is legitimate for a type if the result of the function says the same thing as the original. That, in logic, that's the same as being truth preserving. If it doesn't affect the truth conditions, then it says the same thing. If the, uh, the truth, truth conditions are the same in the original and the result, then they're saying the same thing and the function is legitimate. All right, but we're going to hold off on looking at legitimacy until we explain the other functions. Obverse is the next one. No longer a type of shoe. Obverse is more complicated than converse because there are two steps to it. The first step is to switch the quality. So, if my original is all SRP, what will be the first word of its obverse? No. Who, who said that? Destiny? Yes, you're right. It's no. Why? Why? Because it's the, you, changing the quality means if you start with affirmative, it becomes negative. Now, you don't change the quantity. You never go from all to some. You just go from all to no, or if you start with no, you go to some. Or if you go from some are, you go to some are not. If you start with some are not, you go to some are. Okay? But that's just the first stage. The second stage is you replace P, the predicate, with its complement. Okay, well, I better explain what a compliment is. And I don't mean you look nice today. Even though you do all look nice today. That's a compliment with an I. This is a compliment, like compliment. What is a compliment? <laughs> Anyone come across this in men? No? All right, well, we're ahead of your man. The complement of a set or group, it doesn't matter, group or, or category, is the set or group or category of everything that is not in the original. Now, what this means is that a set and its complement are both mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive. Do you remember those terms? It was just a, a week or so ago we were talking about that. What does it mean for two groups of things to be mutually exclusive? If two groups are mutually exclusive, what does that mean? Only one can exist. The other must die. No. It's like Harry Potter and Voldemort. Um, no, it means, if they're mutually exclusive, it means that they share no members in common. So like cat and dog are mutually exclusive. I know there's that cartoon character, Cat Dog, which you're probably too young to remember, but uh, it's not in either. So, Cat and dog are mutually exclusive because if you're a cat, no 
you're not a duck. All right. What does jointly exhaustive mean? It means that put together it covers all possibilities. That's right. So remember, the example we used to illustrate these concepts was uh, classifying movies. So if I came up with two categories that were jointly exhaustive, then whatever film I came up with, it would be in at least one of them. So if two sets are mutually exclusive and jointly exhaustive, that, that means that anything is in only one of them. Anything is in one of them is jointly exhaustive, and only one of them because they're mutually exclusive. It can't be in both. Make sense? All right, so a set and its complement are both mutually exclusive. If you're in one, you're not in the other, and they're jointly exhaustive. If you, you have to be in one of them. You cannot be in neither. All right, with that in mind, let me ask you this question. Is the complement of ugly things beautiful things? Yes or no? Is, are ugly things and beautiful things complementary? No. No. Why not? Because like okay things. Yes. Uh, in other words, they fail one of the categories. They are mutually exclusive. Because if you're ugly, you're not beautiful. I know, you know, beautiful to some, ugly to other people, as you can tell from babies. Um, but there's a Seinfeld episode about that. There's a Seinfeld episode about everything. But, um, yeah, I mean, this piece of chalk, is it beautiful? <laughs> no. Is it ugly? No. Well, this piece of chalk proves, therefore, that beautiful and ugly things are not jointly exhaustive, because there are things that are in neither. Most things, I would say, are in neither. Okay, so what is the complement of ugly things? Not ugly things. Yeah, or well, we're going to say non-ugly things. So the way to turn a set into its complement is very easy. You just write non-hyphen in front of it. So the complement of P is? None P. Very good. All right then. With that in mind, what is the obverse? Jet's not here. I was going to pick on him. Josh, you get picked on instead. What is the comp? I'm sorry. What is the obverse of all SRP? Um. First, for the first word, remember this rule. No S. No, good. S. S is unchanged, so you can get no S. And then you have to think about this rule. R non P. Yes. So the obverse of all SRP is no S R non P. Ethan, what is the obverse of no S R P? No S R P. No. Oh, I was just saying open. Oh, okay. I'm trying to give you the exact same thing. All right. So you said. All right. Yes. What is uh, no S R P? What is its number? What's that? Some S or not P. You changed Sorry. the quantity. All S. Uh, no, I can't. Can't talk right now, obviously. So we started with no S or P. So the first word is going to be. No. Oh. 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 Yes, because we're changing the quality. We never change the quantity. So okay. if it's universal, it stays universal. Okay. All right. But if it's uh, no, it becomes all. All right, so all S. Now you remember this one. Oh, no. Yes. So the, the obverse of no SRP is all S are non P. Okay. Uh, Zena, what is the obverse of some SRP? <coughs> Good so far. Some S, yes, yes. Keep going. Yes, yes, some S are not, because we started with some S are, so you've got to change the quality of some S are not, and then you replace P with its complement, non-P. So it becomes some S are not, non-P. All right, uh, Brandy, what is the obverse of some S are not P? Some S. Good start, like it so far? R. Yes? R-P. Well, which? Yes, that is correct. 
So it becomes an I-type. You started with an O-type, so it becomes an I-type, so it's some SR, but then you replace P with non-P, so it becomes some SR non-P. Okay? So far, so good? Makes sense? Um, let's move on to contrapositive, then. The rule with contrapositive is uh, well, just like obverse, there are two things that you have to do. And the two thing and of the two things, one of them is actually conversion. So to produce a contrapositive, the first thing you do is to do converse. Okay, then you replace both terms with their complements, not just P this time, both of them. All right, so, Samantha, what is the contrapositive of all SRP? Remember, conversion is just flipping the terms. So A is flip the terms, B is replace both terms with their complements. So you start with all SRP, you end up with? That's just conversion. I need the second step too. I missed that when I was writing So you've done converse, which is step A, but do step two now. Uh, no, you don't have to change the uh, quality. Yeah, in fact, let, let me state this. Of these three, in only one case do you change the type of categorical proposition that you end up with. Which one of these three is it? Obverse. The other ones, because you change the quality. So if you start with an A type, you end up with... If you start with an A type, its obverse is a what type? An E type. If you start with an O type, its obverse is what type? I type. Whereas converse and contrapositive, if you start with an A type, you end up with an A type. Okay? So this is the only one that changes the type. And you never get one that changes the quantity. You never go from an A to an I or an O. Alright, so if the original is all SRP, the first word of the contrapositive will also be all. So we've got as far as all. No, see, you're still just doing conversion. Oh, no. All. Oh, so you leave the non in front of the first, in front of P every time. Well, the converse, if, if you replace S, you replace it with this converse, what's the converse of S? Non S. Non S. So all SRP becomes all. <coughs> All non-P are non-S. Everybody's managing one of, the, one of the stages, but not both. Yes, because, look, you start with... You start with all S are P. Stage one is you switch the terms. So you get all P are S. Stage two is you replace each of the terms with their, uh, with their complement. So you stick none in front of both of them. And you get that. Yeah? All right then. Um, what is the contrapositive of... Um, boy, didn't crowd today. Cat. What is the contrapositive of no SRP? Absolutely right. Good. Uh, Charbel, what is the contrapositive of some SRP? Some SRP. Yeah, okay. okay. Some non SRP. No? Some non P are non S. Yes! Uh, Jordan, what is the contrapositive of some SR not P? You said it again. I've been absorbing it down, sorry. 
What is the contrapositive of some s are not p? Some p. No. Some non p are not. She missed out a word. What was the word she missed out? No. Not. not. Some not. Some non p are not non s. Yes. Okay, so it looks like this. Now, now the question we ask is, are they legitimate? We've already seen that the uh, converse for A types was, was not legitimate. Why not? Because whales. <laughs> yeah, because the original was all whales are mammals, which is true. The converse would be all mammals are, which is not true. So for it to be legitimate, if the first one is true, the second one is automatically true. They mean the same. But they don't mean the same. They're not conveying the same information. How about no cats are dogs? What is the converse of no cats are dogs? We're doing converse now. No dogs are cats. It is true that no cats are dogs. What is the truth value of no dogs are cats? Also true. So what do you think? Legit or not? Yes. yes, it's legit. It's too legit to quit. You people are too young to remember that. You probably do. Uh, all right, what about some cats are cute things? What is the converse of that? Some cats are cute. The converse is? Some cute things are cats. So the so converse is what for I types? Legit or not legit? Legit. Yes. All right. Now what about the last one? Some cats are not cute. Some cute things are not cats. Sounds legit, doesn't it? But let's be careful. If I think of another example, it won't sound so legitimate. Is this true? Uh, some humans are not men. Yes, all you women should be nodding your heads, right? Uh, some humans are not men. It's certainly true. What is the converse of that? Some men are not humans. Now, you might think that, but in fact, that is false. So that tells us converse is not legitimate for, for O-types. Okay? Now... All whales are mammals. What is the obverse? No whales are non mammals. Is that legitimate? Yes. Are you sure? They do have the same truth. Though. All whales are mammals. Every single whale is a mammal. That tells us what? No whales are non mammals. So in fact, aversion is always legitimate. It is just another way of saying the same thing. Okay. Now, contrapositive. A little trickier to work out. What is the contrapositive of all whales or mammals? No. All yes, all non-mammals are non-whales. What do you think? Uh, a little harder to work out. Well, fear not, because what we're going to learn next is going to make it easy to work out. And what we're going to learn next is awesome. Well, of course it's awesome. We're doing logic. Um, Venn diagrams. 